Today on this special edition of the Orthodox Ethos Podcast, a letter from the elder Ephthemios of Kapsala on Manathos concerning the coronavirus and the Orthodox response. So a few days ago, in Greek, there was an important letter that was released online and published by um, ecclesiastical news agencies like Ramfea and others that are well-known. And it was from a well-known and important elder on Manathos of the Keli of the Anastasios of the Resurrection in Kapsala. And his name is Elder Ephthemios. Elder Ephthemios is... uh, one of the well-known disciples of St. Paisios, and he actually is uh, the author, along with his elder, Elder Isaac, of the life of St. Paisios. Uh, This is the the life that was published uh, by the St. Arsenios Monastery and distributed by St. Nectarius Monastery uh, that I had the blessing to help translate and write the uh, preface to. And so I'm well familiar with the fathers and with the Keli, and I've spoken with the elder on a number of occasions. And so when this letter came out on the uh, internet, on uh, published, uh, it was a pretty big event because this is very, very rare for this to happen. And the elder had felt it necessary to write this letter, and I'm going to read it to you uh, today, and we're going to talk about it, uh, because there was a lot of uh, information going out, uh, secondhand, thirdhand, about what his views were, his position was, and he wanted to clarify things and make sure everybody knows exactly where he stands. And it's significant that uh, such a close disciple of Elder St. Paisios, who had spoken and written a lot about the uh, end times, about the Antichrist, about events that would happen, he had spoken uh, and written uh, in particular his views and wanted the, the world to know after his repose that what his views were, well, St. Paisa's um, disciples now are coming forward and saying, uh, speaking about this, this current, uh, current uh, situation. And uh, I think it's very instructive. So I'm going to read that to you. And then occasionally I might stop and clarify things for those who might not know. Uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up with some thoughts on the letter, which I think will be edifying for everyone and enlightening. So it's entitled The Epistle by or the letter by priest monk Ephthemios Kapsala Manathos on the 14th of April 2020. The critical days that we are traversing and the sacredness of the days of Holy Week command rather silence and prayer. Nevertheless, because some opinions were recently circulated under my name on the internet, I shall mention the following so that the truth may be reestablished and harm be avoided. I have never told people to store food because of an impending war, and I have never prophesied the end of the threat of the virus, as some have irresponsibly and falsely diffused. Also, without my permission, they have posted my discussions with inexact and self-contradictory views of mine concerning the coronavirus, which caused questions. My views are clear in what follows. They are completely personal without any desire of imposing them on others. To the many unbearable problems which men have, the threat of the virus has now been added to this, which has ended up a nightmare. People suffer more from their fear, panic, and involuntary reclusion than they do from the virus. The Greek state has taken protective measures, but the church has her own means of confronting the virus. Now humbled as never before, weakened and bound by the state, she is unable to grant them to her faithful. In older times and in similar cases of deadly epidemics, she would perform sanctifications of the waters, aiasmos, and go out in procession with sacred icons and holy relics. Why should these not be done today as well? Is the Lord's hand unable to help us in these days too? And let me comment here, let me stop and say that uh, it's well known in the Greek press and in, in the Orthodox uh, 
uh, ecclesiastical news, uh, various events in uh, the last hundred years of Orthodox Greece, uh, such as in Athens when they had an outbreak and the church came out with the relics and the icons and it brought it to an end. He's going to commemorate some of those in his, in his own life. And so the fact that this was not done and has not been done in Greece is rather uh, a great scandal and uh, something that many people are just uh, in uh, wonder about and, and cannot understand why there's been no such action taken at all. He continues, During the third decade of the 20th century, my village was struck by a plague which killed 50 little children in a few days. They could not dig the graves fast enough. <clears throat> then they brought the skull of St. Haralambos from the St. Stephen's Monastery in Meteora, and the plague immediately ceased. Ever since the Lord performed the mystical supper and handed down the most holy mystery of the divine Eucharist, the world saved in divine liturgy has not ceased to be celebrated to this day. Neither Diocletian, nor the Turks, nor the communists in Russia, nor the Germans, the Nazis, during the years of the occupation, managed to stop the divine liturgy and the faithful from approaching Holy Communion. And now, with the fear of this virus, churches have closed down, and the faithful are deprived of the saving grace of the mysteries of which they have so great a need. On the contrary, while everyone here in Greece remains fearfully silent in the Orthodox churches of Bulgaria, Serbia, and Georgia, divine worship continues unhindered. The churches are open, and divine liturgy is celebrated, and the faithful are not being afraid, afraid of being affected by the virus. The protective measures employed by the present government are unconstitutional, unbearable, extreme, and unfair to the Orthodox Greek people while they have also created an atmosphere of terrorism, which the media aggravates. Yes, the vir virus exists, and we must protect our health and the health of those around us. Fear, however, must vanish, because when man is in a state of fear, he cannot think and act rationally and discreetly with discernment. In a similar case, when the eruption had occurred at Chernobyl, People had then panicked and were examining the vegetables and fruits in order to eat those that had the least exposure to radiation. When St. Pais was, was asked then, he said that we should do the sign of the cross and eat fearlessly, which he himself did, giving and setting an example. Were he alive today in this world, he would be in, in, it would be inconceivable for us to see him wearing a mask and gloves carrying a little bottle of alcohol in his pocket and avoiding people or speaking to them from a distance. He would surely be pacifying the people. He would be helping them put away their fear. And most of all, he would be saddened by the closing of the churches. Such a fear is unbefitting for Christians inspired by the example of the God-man and by the martyrs of our faith. Many are anxiously expecting the defeat of the coronavirus by the invention of the vaccine which will be obligatory for all. As for us, we refuse to be vaccinated. Whoever is afraid, let him receive as many vaccinations and vaccines as he likes. But he should know that they may produce unforeseen and grave side effects, as was the case a few years ago with the vaccines against the bird flu done to children, many of whom became paralyzed. Likewise, many of those who received the vaccine against hepatitis B contracted multiple sclerosis, and the same happens with other vaccines as well. Unless God guards us, what can vaccines and medicines do? The godless Kazanzakis was vaccinated so as to be protected from cholera during the trip of his, and yet he still fell ill. We have superior vaccines and the medicine of immortality, the holy mysteries. We have time-tested doctors, specialists on viruses, St. Haralambos, St. Vesarion of Dusuku Monastery, who are for the plague and for so many, so many other saints. And now, however, with the strict limitations, the people remain helpless and uncomforted. And while everyone is struggling to confront the virus, some people have other things in mind and as their goal. Top doctors and scientists are pointing out that what is happening is a discipline test. The goal is to manipulate the people in the direction they want. This seems strange and incredible until recently, but it is not imaginary, since men are now publicly saying that the 
quote, coronavirus pandemic has brought to the floor the need for a worldwide democratic government, unquote, George Papandreou, the former president of Greece, and proposing that, quote, each man have a, on him a microchip with biometrical data in relation to this virus or to other epidemic measurements, unquote, Evangelos Venizelos, former minister in the previous, uh, one of the previous governments. These people are openly speaking of, mar of the mark and worldwide dictatorship, but do we get it? What are we doing? St. Paisus had spoken and written so much on this topic. Can we possibly trust these men who have enslaved us to the foreign lenders and who are now leading us into slavery to the Antichrist? Foretelling the future hardships, St. Paisus would emphasize, only with a good spiritual life shall we make it through. God has permitted this great trial because of our sins. We have need for sincere repentance, inexhaustible patience, and unceasing prayer, which strengthens our faith. We wish our brethren a good resurrection under whatever circumstances. May the risen one, the Lord of life and vanquisher of death, comfort and enlighten all of us by the light of his resurrection. And may he give power and endurance to his people. By his grace, may we arrive at the day of our deliverance from sin and from all evils. Amen. With pain of heart and sincere brotherly love, priest monk, Ephthemios, cell of the resurrection, Kelly of the resurrection, Kapsala, Mount Athos. Wow. That was a very, very uh, informative and powerful letter. And here, so much we could talk about. I think it speaks for itself. We're going to post it in the uh, description. We'll have it on the Orthodox Ethos website as well. You can read it again and study it. But here, clearly, the clear mind of the saints is presented. Decisive, faithful, uh, with great clarity about what the church should be doing. It should not be closing its doors. It should not be succumbing to fear. People should not be uh, succumbing to fear. People should be communing. The church should be taking its tools, its, its weapons against disease and death, which is the holy mysteries, the icons, the prayers, the processions, the relics. This is what should be going on. The saints and the elder are very clear. Um, this is someone who is speaking to us from the, in the midst of Mount Athos, in the midst of prayer, disciples of saints. Uh, he's someone who's produced tremendous spiritual literature that's exists in English, the ascetics in the world. Uh, he's, we're going to be publishing one of his books later on uh, that he's put together along with his brotherhood. It's so important uh, about Mount Athos and the contemporary saints. Uh, this is coming from the heart of the Orthodox tradition, a very clear, prophetic, decisive word that we should all take heed and listen to for the sake of the witness of the world, but also our own salvation. Here he's clearly saying that these are signs. These people are leading people toward the Antichrist. Uh, those who are talking about global governance and, and microchips and uh, those who are uh, closing churches, uh, who've enslaved, uh, economically enslaved Greece to foreign lenders and all the rest. These people are not to be trusted. The church needs to go back in repentance, patience, prayer, and faith and get back to the work of the church and not become and not be a slave to uh, government. The government can do and does what it, what it should. But we have our tools, he says. We have our uh, path. And uh, we, we give to Caesar what it belongs to Caesar. The church is being closed and the mystery is being discontinued do not belong to Caesar. Caesar does not have that decision-making. And here's what elder, the elder is saying, and so many Athenites obviously are saying that this was a mistake, and we need to repent of this path. Open the churches. Pascha should be celebrated. Take the measurements, of course. Keep distance, of course. It can be done. By the grace of God, everything can be done if we have a good disposition and we are obeying the will of God. The prayers of our holy Saint Paisios and the good witness of his disciples. May God enlighten us and give us strength, as he said, patience, prayer, and repentance for the days ahead. Amen.